Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, he's worthy. Is worthy, he's worthy to be praised. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to. things his right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory the Lord hath made known his salvation his righteousness hath he openly shewed in the sight of the heathen he hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the earth make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise sing unto the lord with the harp with the harp and with the voice of a song with trumpets and sounds of clarinet make a joyful noise before the lord the king let the sea roar and let the fullness thereof the world and they shall and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills be joyful together. Before the Lord, for he cometh and judge the earth. With righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. I have read with you Psalms 98. May the Lord ever. What a friend we have in Jesus all our sins and grief to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief to Good 
never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find the friends so faithful who all our who lost our share? Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Yeah, yeah, Take it to yeah. the Lord in prayer. Jesus knows our
allowing us to see the tree of life. And thank you for the roof over our head and thanks for the food on our table. And Father God, I just come to say thank you. And Father God, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank you enough. And bless our president and he may start doing some of the things the president should do. And bless our pastor and his family and bless my entire church family, Father God. And bless all the children in the world. And Father God, before we go any further, I just want to thank you for all, everything you have ever did in our lives and everything you intend to do in our lives. And Father God, bless the ones in the hospital, the nursing home, the sick and the shed in, Father God, and the bereaved. Everyone within the sound of my voice, Father God, touch them that they may smile again and continue to do your will. And Father God, we're going to run the last mile away. We ask you to please save us a place somewhere in your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We might as well rejoice and be glad in it. How many of you know we serve a faithful God? He's so faithful and he's worthy to receive all honor and glory. So come on and just put your hands together and lend your voices. I call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to me. I call you holy, your name is holy, holy you are, and holy you be.
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'd like to welcome you to our morning worship this morning as we celebrate our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this has become uh, one of our new norms, uh, worshiping virtually. And uh, as I sit here in front of my computer this morning, I want to just let you know I'm so thankful to be a part of the body of Christ, so thankful to be alive and thankful that things are as well as they are. It may not be what we want it to be, but we're truly thankful that God is still in control. And I just want to thank you for joining us this morning. It's their time to to share uh, the post or the, the share the feed. Or let someone know by way of tagging them. Let them know we are celebrating Jesus as we teach in, as we teach His Word this morning. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we are divinely blessed because of you. We are hopeful because of you. We are grateful and blessed because of you. God, if it had not been for you in our lives, on our side, we wouldn't be here today. So we feel like they and just want to give you thanks. And if we had 10,000 tongues, we could not thank you enough. Thank you for the many blessings that we have seen, even in the midst of a uh, pandemic that's known by way of the novice virus, COVID-19. Thank you for keeping us when others couldn't be kept. God, we thank you for making ways for us when there was no way to be made. God, we thank you for opening doors when doors were shut in our face. And God, we are so careful that we will not try to take any credit, but give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And God, once again, ask you to speak through me as I take time to teach your word, speak to your people that we may find ourselves blessed because of your word. And we give you praise, the honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Once again, good morning. My name is Pastor Quinn Morris I'm here at the Tremont Temple. Well, I'm not at the Tremont Temple building. We are doing some work there, and we're not in the building worshiping, but I'm here uh, recording live for us this morning. So we thank you that we have you on 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 the web whether it's on facebook or youtube but just listening we're glad to have you with us this morning and we are thankful that you've tuned in uh this morning we're gonna go to old testament passage uh there in the book of deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter number 16 deuteronomy 16 and um and we're gonna look at verse one and a few verses following uh, but before I read the scripture this morning, go to Deuteronomy chapter 16. I'd like to give a big shout out to those uh, ladies and, and those gentlemen that, that headed up our Harvest Day celebration, and particularly our Harvest Day chairpersons, which have been doing an awesome job these last three years. Uh, Sister Andrea Moon, Sister Donna Williams, and Sister Tessa Livingston. Um, and, you know, been doing a great job with the support of Sister Cutter and the Resource Center ladies over there. We was able to be a blessing. And, and you know, we couldn't have done it without the deacons and their wives bagging up uh, bags of groceries for 
uh, for persons that 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 saw the need for it. And we're just thankful that we can still be a blessing in the midst of troubling times. Amen. And so we're thankful that we can still be a blessing. So I want to give a big shout out to all the Harvest Day participants, those that came out on yesterday. We pray that God bless you and those that took part in helping out and the kids. All, it was just awesome time to see your faces yesterday and, and, and everyone was being safe and continue, we want to continue to be safe until we get a wrap on this uh, this pandemic. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 16, we'll start at verse 1. It's observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God. For in the month of Abib, the Lord thy God brought, brought thee forth out of Egypt by night. Thou shalt therefore sacrifice the Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock of the, of the herd uh, in the place which the Lord shall choose to place his name there. Thou shalt eat no leavened bread with it. Seven days shall thou eat unleavened bread with Therewith, even the bread of affliction, for thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, that thou mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of thy life. It says, Thou uh, mayest remember the day when thou camest forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of our life. I, I just want to talk from the subject. I'm, I'm also going to be doing a little teaching this morning. And I may get a little excited, but uh, the subject this morning is a reminder to give thanks. A reminder to give thanks. A uh, little pastoral Christian hunter joke um, goes on by saying that was a man by the name of Bill who was hunting in the woods of Prince George in British Columbia, Canada. It had been a slow day for Bill and he had found no game to shoot. I uh, suddenly heard behind him a noise in the woods. So he whirled around to see what the noise was. It was two uh, fierce looking bears coming toward him. He quickly raised his rifle, raised his rifle to his shoulder and took aim and pulled the trigger and he heard the sound click. Nothing, a rifle misfire. He reloaded and, and aimed and fired again. Click, click, click. Uh, Bill rifle was misfiring and again, nothing. Just the gun just wasn't working. By this time, the bear was almost on top of him. So Bill, in desperation, he threw his rifle and he began to run. As Bill ran, the closer the bears got to him. And finally, Bill came to a cliff. He was at the edge of a cliff and, and there was nothing to do but to drop to his knees and pray. And Bill said in his prayer, say, oh Lord, I pray that you make these bears, some Christian bears. And as Bill opened his eyes to his surprise, the bear was on their knees praying also. But as he thought his prayers had been answered. He heard the voice of one bear and said, Lord, thank you for this meal we're about to receive. <laughs> okay, and maybe it wasn't fun to you. But this, the point I'm making is there always come a time in our life where we should give God thanks. And sometimes we are reminded by the subtle things that has happened in our life. <laughs> that remind us that we should give thanks for all that he has done. And if God has done anything for you, through you, brought you over some stuff, brought you through some things, brought you out of some stuff, uh, you should be willing to give God thanks. As we look at our text this morning, the, the Hebrews or Israelite, Israel, they're reminded to give thanks for how God had brought them out of Egypt in haste by night and saved them from the army of Pharaoh uh, and allowed Pharaoh and his army to drown in the Red Sea. As we look at our text today, we see how God said, uh, I want you to take some time to, you know, just eat some bread, unleavened bread that's not 
may not be what you used to eating, but it's a reminder to give thanks what God has brought you from. And so today we'll just talk about the three major festivals that the Hebrews had. And they all were festivals, not just to have a party and celebrate, but these festivals of feasts was time to remind the Israelites of what God had done for them. And as Christians today, there be, should be some things in your life that remind you where the Lord has brought you from. And, and perhaps you, you may sit down to eat dinner and you see you have more than you can eat, but you can be reminded of the time when you didn't have food on your table. Maybe you can, can, can look around your house and everyone's well, and you can be reminded of the time when there was sickness in the home. That, that should be some reminders in your life when you go to the bank and make a withdrawal, go to the ATM, you can be you reminded of the time when you didn't have a, a penny to your name and uh, or didn't have a job. So there should be some things in our lives that cause us to be reminded of how good God has been for us. It's not to remind us that we are better now, not to remind us that we can be uh, a sophisticated, sedity, or bougie, uh, or arrogant, or conceited, but it should just remind us that the Lord has brought you from a long ways. Every now and then, there should be some things that happen in your life that you can reflect back on your life and just give God thanks. Uh, so that 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 that's that's pretty much the kickstand for our lesson this morning, and it talks about remind Israel being reminded of giving God thanks for bringing them out of Egypt. Many of you may never visit Egypt, been to Egypt, may never go to Egypt. But we have all had an Egypt experience. Well, was there some things that was uncomfortable, some places that we didn't want to be, uh, some and endure some hardship by way of a taskmaster called life. But God brought us out. And if you have any guts in you, you ought to just give God some thanks for bringing you out of your situation. Uh, when we look at the three major fest feasts or uh, festivals or celebration that Hebrew had. First, there's the Passover. The first uh, feast is the Passover. You look at the Passover. The Passover uh, is, is, the, is the first of the Jewish festival and it's called the Feast of Passover. It's usually held in March or April each year at the beginning of what is known as the Spring of Grain Harvest. It was a time for thanksgiving. It was a time to remember how God himself had brought the Jewish people out of Egypt miraculously. It was this festival that God reminds his people that he was their savior and their God. When we look at the New Testament, this festival takes a greater significance for Christians because it was at the Passover that Jesus was crucified. Passover reminds us that Jesus came to the earth to be our savior by taking us out of slavery or the slavery of sin and bringing us into a new relationship with God. Even though sin may still be in your life, you may still struggle with sin, but because of Jesus, he has already paid the price for your sin. This is why you give thanks because the sin that would have killed you before caused you to burn in hell's fire. It's so good that Jesus has already paid the, the price, already set bail, and already uh, paid the paid whatever uh, penalty it would have been for you by dying on the cross at Calvary. So the Passover is not only significant for the Hebrews, but the modern day Christians that Jesus has already paid the price. And the second festival that the, that the Jews, the Hebrew, celebrate is the Feast of Weeks. The Feast of Weeks. W-E-E-K-S, the Feast of Weeks. This second major Jewish ce uh, festival celebration is also known as the Feast of Harvest. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 16, it occurs uh, at the end of the barley harvest time. It represents the first fruit. There in Numbers 28, verse 26, it represents the first fruit gathered in as a result of the labor of those who reap the spring grain harvest in ancient Israel. If you ever look at Exodus 23, 
in 16 that you see the story more in detail uh, it talks about those that reap the spring grain harvest that ancient Israel it took place 50 days after Passover and is better known to us to known, better known to us today as Pentecost see the pass of the uh, Passover celebration happens during what we know as Easter today and so Passover South Sunday is the same time we celebrate Easter and 50 days from that is what we know as uh, the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, Pentecost. And, you know, that takes a different look too in Acts chapter 2 in the New Testament on the day of Pentecost. As they were celebrating Pentecost, uh, the Holy Spirit came in and 50 meaning celebration, number Jubilee. In New Testament, we see the Pentecost having a new significance. As you look at Acts 2, the Holy Spirit came in and, and rest upon the people like a, a, a mighty spirit or a dove resting on them. And the, the people from different nation, nationalities spoke a different tongue. They received, understand each other. It was something about the power of the Holy Spirit. It enables them to experience the first fruit of Jesus' harvest, that Pentecost. So you got to understand as Christians, we should be reminded of Pentecost, what Jesus did. And we have a reason to celebrate uh, the third, the third festival, the third major uh, festival uh, that the Hebrews celebrate. Uh, the Hebrews celebrate uh, is the the Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles uh, is referenced by one commentator as the Autumn Harvest. But the Feast of Tabernacles occurs after the grape and grain harvest was over. It was a festival that the Jews would camp out for weeks in tents, recalling the temporary dwelling that they had in Exodus. Before there was temples, before there was churches, they had tents, and the tents were called tabernacles. And the tabernacle was pretty much a tent that they would carry around with them, and as they carried the, the tent around with them, wherever they stopped, they would put these tabernacles up or a tent and make it their worship place. For us as Christians, the Feast of Tabernacles is a reminder that our dwelling on earth is not permanent, but temporary. Uh, as Christians, we understand we won't be here forever. My, uh, I, I was, I had the opportunity to celebrate the home going service of my mom a few weeks back. And, you know, I, I got comfort and relief and I was able to celebrate because she constantly told me that, that this was not her home. Uh, and she tried to instill that into me. They know that we're just passing through. We're just sojourners passing through. So as we celebrate Harvest Day today, let's re let's remind that Harvest stands in succession to these great Jewish uh, celebration of uh, uh, the Feast of the Passover, which occurs at the beginning of spring grain harvest and the Feast of Pentecost occurs at the end of spring grain harvest and the Feast of Tabernacles is at the end of autumn harvest. And so I want to give you three things for us to, as a reminder to give thanks. Uh, as, as Christians, we got to understand the price has already been paid. And as we was able to give food out and, and harvest souls by way of Christian, uh, by way of sharing our testimony and talking about Jesus there should be some things in your life that remind you to give thanks. And, and I want to give you three things. First of all, uh, the three things I want to give you that remind you to give thanks. Reminder of the price that was paid. Reminder of the price that was paid. Uh, Jesus paid the price for your sins. The, the celebration of the Passover occurs as Jesus in Old Testament form of God by way of Moses and Aaron led the Hebrews across this Red Sea. And God in the New Testament sent his son Jesus to pay the price for our sin. The same way Pharaoh and his army tried to kill the Hebrews because they left and, and they tried to attack them. God had a way of protecting them and allowed Pharaoh and his army to drown in the Red Sea. God took care 
of them. The same way the New Testament, God took care of us when from sin has tried to chase us down and still chasing us, try to destroy us, try to hurt, harm us. But, but God paid the price for our sins by dying on the cross. It reminds us that, that I should just give thanks and praise that God has already paid the price. I, I don't have to die for my struggles in life. There are people that will constantly say, well, uh, you, you have this struggle, I have that struggle. But you can tell them Jesus has already paid the price. If, if I go to hell, it won't be because of my sin, because Jesus has already paid the price for my sins. And the Bible teaches us as, as Christians that once we're saved, no one can pluck you out of his hand. You will always have a struggle with your flesh. You will always have a struggle in this life with sin. But I'm so thankful that that, that my sin don't have to send me to a hell's fire because I'm reminded that the price has already been paid. That's enough for you to give thanks. That's enough to, to lift holy hands. That's enough to say thank you every now and then because the price is too big for us to pay, too great for us to ever redeem ourselves. But I'm so glad that we have a Savior that paid the price. Yes, there's Pentecost a celebration, but in Pentecost, there was a price to be paid and the price was paid on Calvary when Jesus hung there when they put the nails in his hand, when he hung there and they put the nails in his feet, rivers in his feet, they pierced him in his side. They mocked him, put thorns on his head as a crown. They, he asked for water. He was thirsty. They gave him vinegar on a sponge. They, he, they mocked. They took his clothes off. They beat him from the sixth to the ninth hour. But Jesus paid the price for my sin. That's why you don't have to worry about what people bring up your past. People bring up your struggles. Uh, where you, where they curse, they do this. Listen, I hate it. It's a struggle in life. And if people will be honest with themselves, instead of throwing stones and trying to find reason to find fault in everybody else, take time to look in the mirror and look at yourself and just realize that you're not perfect yourself. But I'm so glad that in my imperfection, I can still give him thanks because he paid the price for me. Do, do I have anybody there that's excited that God paid the price uh, for your sins? Number two, not only it, it reminds us, not only of the power, uh, reminds us of the price, but it reminds us of the power, it reminds us of the power of God. If there we see, we see, we see the Passover, but then you see the Feast of Pentecost. On Pentecost, we see the power of God came in like a mighty, Russian wind. And so I give thanks because of his power, his healing power, his deliverance power, his way making power. And so that's, that should be some things in your life that should just remind you to give thanks. And one thing to remind me to give thanks that, that God has so much power in his hand that demons have to tremble. Every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess at the power of God. What you're going through is not greater than the power of your God. What you've been through is not greater. No sickness, no, no ailment, no dysfunction, no, no diagnosis, no depression, no heartache, no pain has more power than your God. The reason I can celebrate, the reason I can give praise, the reason I want you to give God praise is because you should be reminded of the power of God. Let me help you. Have you ever been through some stuff that you yourself couldn't get out of, but God's power showed up? Have you ever had some trials and situation that you thought was the end, but God's power was showed up and it was just the beginning of a breakthrough? When God, when the world counts you out, God's power will show up and, you'll, and show all the naysayers, all the haters, all your doubters, all the people that tried to pull you down to show them that God's power is greater than the tactics of the enemy, greater than the tactics of Satan and his imp. I'm so glad that I don't have enough, that I may never, I'm glad that I, I don't have to rely on my power because my power source just depends on what day it is. I may be up the day and down tomorrow, but the power of God is always strong. He's always mighty, always ready to fight. He's a battle act in the time of battle. He's battle act in the time of a storm. He's a warrior on the front line, ready to defend the child of his. I'm so glad that I'm reminded of his power. God has so much power. He healed the lady that 
that had the issue of blood. He had so much power, we took the lady that was at the well, drawing water, and she dropped her water pot, and he saved her and said, go back and tell everyone and save men and tell them about Jesus. He had so much power that he took the man that was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 long years, waiting for the trouble of the water. But he showed up his power, didn't have the trouble of the water, but he, he was he was healing power himself. I'm so glad that I'm reminded of his power. And everybody in this, in this life should have some moments that remind you of God's power. It should be enough to remind you to give thanks. That's why we give thanks. We don't just give thanks for, for material things, i.e. cars, purses, homes, uh, things we wear. No, no, no. We don't, those things are just extra additives. But when God wakes you up in the morning, that's enough to give thanks. When you have food on your table, that's enough to give thanks. When you can feed yourself, that's enough to give thanks. When you can walk to the bathroom and drag your other foot behind you, that's enough to give thanks. I know none of us can do what we used to do, but that's called a cycle of life. But if you can still do a little bit, that's enough to give thanks. So we should be reminded in this life to give thanks for his power, reminded to give thanks for the price that he paid. But also we should be reminded to give thanks for the predestination. Uh, or should, should I say, remind that we predestine for greatness. The Feast of Tabernacles was at the end of, of, of autumn. And it was a time to remind us that where we are now, is not our dwelling place. Uh, we are predestined to be with God in heaven one day. The Feast of Tabernacles was the third uh, celebration. It reminds us of a future, a future with God in heaven, where God himself would be in our midst and where there would be no more crying, no more pain, no more suffering, no more death. And separation from my loved ones. The Feast of Tabernacle, the Feast of Christians, and a Feast of Hope for our future. So when I think about the Feast of our, a Feast of Tabernacle, I think about how God has predestined a greater place, a greater future, a greater hope for you and I. So when I'm giving thanks, I just don't give him thanks for right now. I've given thanks what's going to happen on tomorrow. I've given thanks what's going to happen on next week. I've given thanks what's going to happen on next year. Because God has already predestined that me and you and all other believers be in a better place. So you give God praise. You just don't praise him for where you are. Every now and then you give God praise for where you're getting ready to go. You may not have what you think you should have right now, but praise him because you won't be down always. Uh, you, you may be crying right now, but give him praise because there's going to come a time when God will wipe away all your tears from your eyes. David said, weeping man, do it for a night, but that's joy that should come in the morning. You should be reminded to give him thanks for where you're getting ready to go. I know that some of you uh, have friends that are satisfied with where they are right now, but there's many of us out there that just can't be satisfied with where you are. You can't be satisfied with things as they are. And you're ready to go a little higher in God. COVID-19 can't hold you down. Being quarantined can't hold you down. Uh, 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 a delay in presidency and our future president cannot hold you down. But you got to understand that you got a God that's already have your future in his hand. I don't know what tomorrow will bring, but I do know who holds my tomorrow. And the Lord that I serve, he holds our tomorrow and everything will be all right. So I just want to give you a few reminders to give him thanks. So if God has been good to you, that should be enough to give him thanks. If God has made a way for you, that's enough to give him thanks. If God has opened doors for you, that's enough to give him thanks. If God has taken care of your children and he's taking care of you right now, that's enough to give him thanks. 
I don't know about you, my sisters and my brother. If you got a little food on your table, that's enough to give him things. You got a piece of car to drive. That's enough to give him things. But most of all, you ought to give him things that one Friday night that he died for your sins. He died for my sins, but I'm so glad that it didn't stay dead. And that's not the end of the story. Because if that had been the end of the story, my life would have been in vain. My preaching would have been in vain. My hopes would have been in vain. But that's not the end of the story. Yes, he stayed dead all night Friday. Yes, he was dead all day Saturday. Yes, he was dead all night Saturday night. But the story continues because early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And I'm reminded to give him thanks because he have enough power to take care of me. He got enough power to take care of you at the same time. So despite what it looked like, we should give him thanks. Despite what the CDC says, we should give him thanks. Despite what the science and the report says and the death toll are still rising, we should give him thanks. Do I have anybody here say I may have some rough moments in life, but God is still good. God is still worthy to be praised. We have had some ups and God knows we have some downs, but we're still here. And because we're still here, that's enough to give him thanks. My sisters and my brothers, there should be some personal nuggets in your life. That should remind you to give God thanks. That should remind you to give him praise. Despite what it looks like. God is still good. Don't allow, don't allow the noise of social media. Don't allow the noise of the, the TV report. Don't allow the noise of this world to cause you to lose focus of your God. I want you to understand God has been great and he's better than great to you and I. And that's enough to give him thanks. So I challenge you today, my sisters and my brothers, to look at your life and look at those things that remind you to give him thanks. May God bless you and my, may God continue to keep you is my prayer. God, we thank you once again for those reminders to give us thanks, give you thanks. I'm reminded how I see people that have retired, and people that have been through trials, been through movements, and been through ups, and been through downs, and they still hear God. Let them be reminded to give you thanks. I see people that's been sick and not well, let them, let them give you thanks. I see people that have, have that didn't have jobs, a lost job, lost all they have, and now they bounce back. Let them be reminded to give you thanks. God, I've seen people that have been strung out on drugs and alcohol and other things in life, but now they, they're doing pretty good for themselves. Let them be reminded to give you thanks. But God, if no one else give you thanks, speak to our heart that we can thank you all by ourselves. You've been better to us than we can ever be to ourselves, and God, we just say thank you. Bless everyone under the sound of my weak voice. Continue to strengthen me. Strengthen my family, strengthen my wife, strengthen my everything around this. I continue to stand on your word and your will, knowing that you're faithful and you're just. God bless this city, bless this state, bless this nation. And God, we pray for our future because we predestined for greatness and we claim victory. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Now, God, we ask that the sweet of the Holy Spirit rest with by now his form evermore. Their hearts say, Amen, Amen, Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Repeat after me, asking me in my house, we will serve the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.